Good morning, class. Today, we'll explore the workings of a hydroelectric power plant. As we've discussed earlier, these plants are incredible examples of sustainable energy generation. Now, before we proceed further, does anyone have any questions or doubts about what we've covered so far? Good morning, teacher. I have a question. You mentioned the different types of turbines used in hydropower plants, the Francis, Kaplan, and Pelton turbines. How does the choice of turbine type affect the plant's performance or efficiency? Excellent question. The choice of turbine type is indeed crucial and depends on the specific characteristics of the water flow in the head of the plant. Let's delve into it a bit more. The Francis turbine is well suited for medium to high head applications, where the water has a significant drop in elevation. It is designed to handle a wide range of flow rates efficiently. Its curved blades allow the turbine to function optimally under varying water conditions, making it a versatile choice. On the other hand, the Kaplan turbine is more appropriate for low to medium head applications. This turbine has adjustable blades, called pitch blades, that can change their angle during operation. This feature allows the Kaplan turbine to maintain high efficiency even at different flow rates. It's particularly useful in locations where the water flow varies seasonally. Lastly, the Pelton turbine is designed for high head applications, where the water has a considerable vertical drop. It's characterized by its unique design with divided buckets on the wheel. Water is jetted onto these buckets, causing the wheel to rotate. The Pelton turbine's efficiency comes from its ability to convert high-speed water jets into rotational energy effectively. I will show you it's working on 3D animation. So you will understand. Hydropower. Hydropower, or hydroelectricity, refers to the conversion of energy from flowing water into electricity. It is considered a renewable energy source because the water cycle is constantly renewed by the sun. One of the first uses of hydroenergy was for mechanical milling, such as grinding grains. But today, modern hydro plants produce electricity using turbines and generators. The mechanical energy created by moving water spins rotors on a turbine. This turbine is connected to an electromagnetic generator, which produces electricity when the turbine spins. There are two main types of hydroelectricity production, dams and run of river. Hydro dams utilize the potential energy from dammed water to produce electricity. A dam is a large barrier constructed to raise the level of water and control its flow. The elevation created by the dam creates gravitational force for turning the turbine when water is released. Some dams also contain an additional reservoir at their base where water is stored to be pumped to the higher reservoir for release when electricity is in demand. This is referred to as pumped storage hydro. The second form of hydroelectricity production is run of river hydro. Run of river still uses turbines and generators, but relies on natural water flow rates of rivers, diverting just a portion of the water through turbines. Because run of river hydro is subject to natural water variability, it is more intermittent than dammed hydro. There are various sizes of hydro plants that produce electricity. Large hydro, greater than 30 megawatts, small hydro, 100 kilowatts to 30 megawatts, and micro hydro, less than 100 kilowatts. The Hoover Dam in the United States is a whopping 2,074 megawatts, which is enough to serve 1.3 million people. Of all renewable energy sources, hydropower holds the largest share of worldwide electricity production. Hydropower has several benefits. It is a cost-competitive form of electricity, even though the initial building cost can be high. It is quite reliable compared to other renewable options and pairs well with other sources as it can be used as base load power. In some cases, dammed reservoirs can also help with flood control and be a reliable water supply for communities. There are also some concerns with hydropower, especially when it comes to large dams. Damming a river has a major impact on the local environment, changing wildlife habitats, blocking fish passage, and often forcing people in riverside communities to move out of their homes. In addition, dam failures can be catastrophic, claiming the lives of those living downstream. Hydro plants are also not completely free of greenhouse gas emissions. As with most forms of energy, carbon dioxide emissions happen during construction, particularly due to the large quantities of cement used, and plant matter in the flooded areas makes methane, another greenhouse gas, as it decays underwater. That's hydropower. The choice of turbine depends on factors such as the head, flow rate, and water conditions at the site. 
Engineers carefully select the appropriate turbine type during the plant's design phase to ensure it operates at maximum efficiency with the available water resources. I hope that clarifies your question. If you have any more doubts or need further explanations, feel free to ask. Questions like these help us understand the topic better, so don't hesitate to share your thoughts.